Hello, my name is Titus Abbott and I am here for the first lesson in this um, course on um, saxophone. And today I want to talk about uh, long tones. And um, almost every teacher suggests to their students that they should think about doing long tones at the beginning of their practice session. And uh, we, most of us uh, resist that um, piece of advice. Uh, partially because it feels super, super uninteresting uh, slash boring. And um, so almost every saxophone teacher is uh, prescribing this for their students. And so I, I and all the, the, which I mentioned in the introduction, all three of the uh, elements for helping you develop your sound, long tones, overtones and work on the altissimo are um, exercises that one should do every day f as for the duration because the work of developing uh, a good sound on saxophone is a, is a project that is never finished. Um, uh, 30 years in and still um, doing overtones, long tones, etc. Um, so uh, this is not going to be a terribly long video because I'm not going to play uh, a long tone on every note on my instrument. Um, there are a lot of different ways to talk about long tones and how to go about playing long tones. And I will uh, have some links down below that you can uh, look at other uh, videos on on YouTube and also in the books that I just mentioned in the introduction, uh, particularly um, the first page of Sigurd Rascher's uh, book, Top Tones for Saxophone. There's uh, a page uh, on thinking about long tones in various different contexts, whether it's all one long tone or whether you start quiet and go loud and then go back to quiet or the reverse. Um, and then he also has a concept of terrace dynamics where you play one note very loud, then less loud, etc., all the way down to uh, pianissimo. Um, so one can spend a lot of time on this and, and uh, people who are working on their sound to develop uh, um, uh, a, a, a stronger facility should spend more time at this. Um, uh, every one of us should spend uh, the beginning of our practice on it. Just uh, Steve Lacey calls it like waking up the horn. Um, and he talks about how uh, when uh, Sonny Rollins was was um, practicing outside at one of the New York bridges, whether I don't know if it's it, Brooklyn Bridge or Williamsburg Bridge, one of the bridges, he joined, uh, uh, Steve Lacey joined Sonny Rollins and being outside, uh, his sound was completely uh, almost inaudible because of all the noise and, and Sonny Rollins who had been out there for weeks or months uh, was pushing that sound out. Um, uh, so the idea of generating a long tone um, as, as the beginning of your practice um, is uh, super important and, and as a teacher it's one of the things that I always listen to the very beginning of any lesson with any student, almost of any level, I listen to their long tones. And for me, it's like I can hear where they're at, what, they, what they've been up to, where uh, it's kind of like a, a diagnostic in some ways. I can hear a lot in some, what someone plays in a long tone. And I usually get them to play one in the middle of the horn, a G uh, in the lower register, and maybe uh, F-sharp in the upper register, maybe a high note and a low note. And then I can get a sense of, of what, where they're at with that. And it, and it kind of sets, gets the lesson started off. Um, so, 
I'm going to uh, discuss, um, it's a little bit si outside of the um, uh, a scope of this class to go into all the elements of uh, embouchure and uh, breathing and air support and, and all of those things that go into um, playing the saxophone and generating a long tone in particular. But um, so um, if you're just starting out, um, you should work with a teacher um, to help you with all of those things. Um, uh, the idea of a long tone is that you start it with air, not tongued. Um, that's a primary difference, and that you get a good breath. And um, in the um, there's a, a chapter in um, David Liebman's book that I also recommended, which is all on breathing. Um, and uh, his teacher Joe Allard was uh, um, adamant that people learn how to breathe. Um, and so I, I, I uh, suggest that, that people think about their breathing. But what we're going to do, just introduction today of long tones. And like a lot of the um, uh, exercises that I'm going to suggest, um, the fact that you're doing them every day is as important as how well you do them. Uh, when we get to overtones, this is more the case. The fact that you are actually doing overtones every day is is that's 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 already a step. It's a little bit like um, in exercise. If you uh, work out at the gym, you know every other day and build up and have a routine and a trainer. I mean that's that's great. But um, if you just walk every day. That's exercise. Same thing with the saxophone. Um, long tones, overtones, uh, altissimo. If you do those every day, even if you're you're doing them, you're not going whole hog into playing a long tone and every note from the down to the bottom of the instrument, all the way up to the top and into the altissimo, uh, which one can do. Uh, you're still um, you're still getting the benefit of working on. Uh, a sound developing uh, skill. So the um, idea of starting a long tone is that you start it with air and then obviously play a long. In some instances in the Rasher book, uh, the first exercise is to play one very long note without um, any change in dynamic um, and just keep it as stable as possible. And you, what you're trying to do is listen out for any kind of wobbling or inflection or or um, or quaver or whatever. And uh, you don't have to be too judgmental about it. Just notice. A lot of these exercises, you want to be kind of scientific about it. Just be observing, not necessarily uh, judging. Just observe, and you can observe over a very long period. Um, and when that's into the years and multi years, then um, you know it's 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 a, it's a long term process. Not to say that one can't make uh, progress even in a shorter term. Um, so I'm going to play um, a long tone on um, on each instrument, starting with soprano, then alto, then tenor, on a G, um, and I might just. Uh, um, talk about how I'm going to go about it. First I'll play a long tone without any dynamic change. So just absolutely as stable as possible. And I usually choose just a very generic note, which is often the, the first note that anyone learns on saxophone, uh, G. So I'm going to start with air and just generate a note and hold it for as long as I can.
It's as simple as that. Just start with air, take a deep breath, and put out as, as long a note as you can. Some days you'll put out a longer note than others. It's not a competition to see who can put out the longest note. It really has more to do with just get working on your breathing at the same time. Um, I'd like you to think of this more as uh, meditation or yoga practice than uh, something that you need to just really uh, get um, get good at. Um, doing it at all is as as helpful as anything, um, and doing it every day is also uh, very important. So that was one way of doing a long tone. Then the next is, that has a little bit of uh, issue when you get loud. If you go from very soft to very loud and back to very soft. One can have an issue with intonation uh, where the um, uh, when, particularly when you get loud um, you can have a, a, a fall in pitch and I, I sometimes call this the um, the vacuum cleaner sound you know like when you have a vacuum cleaner and, and it and it, it gets it's uh, Get stuck on something, and, and the pitch of the of the motor drops. I'll show you what I mean by that. So, um, if you're going, starting quietly, going loud, and I'll I'll try to replicate this. So let's see if I can do this. So what happened there was when I went to loud, it the pitch dropped. Uh, so I often call that the vacuum cleaner effect. So what you want to do is is just when you get loud, you might have to be a little firmer with your embouchure in order to support it. And then when you go soft, you might have to lighten up so you don't go sharp either. That's the other. Uh, sharp when you're quiet is, is another uh, um, pitfall. So, so this is a different way to play. Um, a, uh, a long tone, starting with just air, very quietly, building to loud, and then uh, decrescendo again, so. Right. So simple as that. Could be longer than that. As I said, there's, it's not a competition for how long a note. Um, it's more the quality of it that you're working on. Starting with the long tone with no dynamic change. So that is the discussion of long tones today. Um, I encourage you to um, play long tone in multiple different parts of your instrument. Don't shy away from very high notes, very low notes, um, and uh, spend some time at it. Um, one thing I'd like to caution people on is is taking on too much at once uh, in what, whatever we're doing, whether it's uh, long tones or overtones. Uh, the idea of uh, spending an hour on long tones uh, for a week and then getting overwhelmed by that and uh, and then not touching them again for for a long time. 
better to be realistic and do a couple of long tones before you start practicing. Um, the next lesson, which we're going to uh, launch into, is overtones. Um, and working on those every day is also important. And working on playing in the altissimo um, is another exercise. And the work on the altissimo is really um, for sound development rather than in order to uh, be able to play notes. It has the added benefit of being able to play notes in the altissimo, but that the primary uh, reason that uh, I'm presenting it here will be uh, for um, uh, sound development. And the interesting thing is, is that w when you work on the altissimo and overtones and long tones, all of those elements help you play sa the sound of your in your sound within the range of the instrument within the where there are keys. The altissimo is notes that are beyond the the uh, range of the saxophone, the high, very high notes, um, and the overtones go into that same range as well. So that will be the next lesson. Uh, so please, if you are um, uh, interested in these um, um, discussions on saxophone sound and sound development, please um, subscribe to the channel and and uh, press like and um, um, and you should be able to get uh, updates on when uh, new lessons are added. So thank you for joining us and uh, we'll see you soon for the next discussion on overtones.